In this video, we're installing cordless top-down bottom-up 3 quarter inch single cell light filtering shades from awardblinds.com. The materials and tools needed for this project are new window shades, mounting brackets and screws, which ideally came with your shades, pilot drill bits, we'll talk more about selecting the right size later, Phillips and a flathead screwdriver, also, if you have it, a drill with longer Phillips and flathead bits or shorter bits with a magnetic drive guide, a level, pencil, measuring tape, and a ladder if you need it. We replaced our old cord lift blinds with cordless top-down bottom-up shades to better accommodate our cat-friendly household. For an inside mount, ensure sufficient depth and then measure the width of the window opening in three places, recording the smallest measurement. Similarly, measure the height in three places as well, but noting the largest measurement. Some manufacturers recommend rounding down one eighth of an inch for the width, but rounding up one eighth of an inch for the height. It's also advisable to incorporate a one eighth to one quarter inch gap between the shade and trim on both sides to facilitate smooth movement of the window shade without interference. When buying store-bought shades, be sure to compare their actual dimensions to your recorded measurements. And for online custom orders, be sure to follow the company's measurement guidelines as some may automatically deduct from your recorded measurements based on the width for proper installation and operation. The mounting hardware, brackets, and screws were included with our shades. The install guide that came with our shades specified marking two inches in from the left and right sides of the window frame using a pencil. We measured two inches in from each end of the shade as well to confirm that no hardware occupied that space or would interfere with the bracket. While our 23 inch wide shade came with two brackets, if your set includes a third bracket for the center, use a tape measure to determine its placement along the shade headrail ensuring it aligns with sections free of existing hardware, or where the bracket can be positioned without putting pressure on any hardware components. Ensure that you have sufficient clearance depth to prevent any obstructions, such as window cranks or handles when the shade is fully lowered. Products like spacer blocks and extension brackets can be used in situations where standard mounting options face challenges, such as handles and cranks. Use a level to check whether the upper window casing is level. Position the pencil mark at the bracket center and mark the screw holes using a pencil. Use a pilot hole drill bit to drill holes for the screws. I used a three over 32 inch drill bit for this project. If you don't have shade instructions or the bit size is not specified, I have a process for selecting an appropriate drill bit. What I do is hold the screw below various drill bits until I find a bit that is similar in size to the screw center and allows me to see the screw threads beyond the bit's width. This process helps to avoid drilling too large of a pilot hole. For anchors and drywall, I choose a drill bit size that's close to, but smaller than the anchor width, so I can use a hammer to tap it into the wall without the anchor bending. Secure the brackets to the top of the window frame using screws depending on your chosen mounting option. Position the headrail into the mounting brackets by angling the shade to align the top of it with the bracket's protruding lip. Place the bracket lip underneath the front of the headrail, then move the bottom of the shade back towards the window until you hear a click, ensuring a secure fit. Move the shade up and down to ensure smooth operation. If you're interested in the specs and cost of the shade that we installed, I'll put our order specifications in the description. If you're planning to install an outside mount shade as well, be sure to check out this video next.